a guest posture on here. And today let's talk about how I'm going to start off my league in 3.21 what I'm going to take on the Atlas passive trade. First up, thank you for our devs on MaxRoll that they make this cool tool for us. Uh, basically, this is like a PoE planner. You already know it, but there's also some extra stuff. There's obviously the usual stuff, the stat summary on the side, but there's also strategy, which is kind of cool. You can like select whether you're Searing Exarch or Eldritch. You can even exactly choose your Sextant modifier for the strat you're running. Um, you can choose whatever you're going to put in here in terms of Scarabs, etc., and you can even do your favorite maps. I think this is really cool if you want to share your strats, for example, for content creators. So I'm going to link it down in the description if you want to share your strat with somebody. Also, it actually lets you exactly see what you picked at one point. For example, if you see here, it actually tells you, you can actually jump to where you were on here. So it's just kind of cool. Also, disclaimer, there's a lot of ways to do Atlas Passive Tree. By no means am I going to say that this is the best way to do it. This is just my personal preference. Now, first up, I want a cozy leak start and no hard content. While I'm farming, I don't want to constantly think about upgrading my gear so I can do harder content. All I want to think about is progressing and getting to the good stuff. I also really hate dying and losing XP. Also, XP is really important at leak start because Getting passive points can be a lot of power increase. The worse your gear is, the more you're going to rely on actually getting stats from your passive tree. So that means stuff like Metamorph, for example, is already out of the gutter. Metamorphs can be profitable end game, especially with Scarabs. But at leak start, especially with a lot of leak stars not having that much single target damage, it's not that great. And then I guess a controversial one is that I don't really take essences anymore at the very, very start. Later, I think it's great. But there's always this thing ever since Arch Nemesis got introduced and rares have been a lot stronger. There's always this ring where there's going to be this one essence that's just going to absolutely annihilate you. Three essences are just going to fall over and then one is just going to one-shot you multiple times or even going to chase you through the map. I think essences are amazing once you have your build set up, but until then, I'm not a big fan. Then I have fast progression. What does that mean? I like to get into end game strats basically as fast as possible. And the way to do that is unlock everything first, right? There's obviously the strat where you just, I don't know, rush to a certain thing and then don't unlock everything and just capitalize on the early market but that's usually not what i do i like to unlock everything i like to get all my favorite slots on the side as well and in order to do that i will have to actually complete all maps and that will take quite some time so what i don't want to do is make my maps longer with stuff like harbinger breach abyss stuff like that there's one thing that i think is worth making your maps longer more into that later but in general i just Try to keep it down. And then I also want good map sustain. I never want to get stuck on maps. As much as possible, don't want to buy maps because it's really annoying. So that basically just means all of these extra map clusters are going to be premium. All right, so let's get into it. So the first thing I'm worrying about when I get onto my Atlas passive tree is not running out of maps. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to path up here because it's the most consistent way to path. And it's also already setting up for later. And then we're taking shaping the skies right here. After that, I also want to get stronger. So right over there is the extra shrine every map. I think it's really nice to have that extra boost of power or speed or region or defense every map. And it also gives you extra mobs or extra XP. Right after that, I go right to the left side and I do the same thing here. We take the next map nodes with shaping the mountains. And after that, we go up. We actually take stream of consciousness really early. Since we're not really looking to use any fragments early, this is just straight up extra content for very little investment. And then we round it out with the last map cluster. Also something I like to do is take this one pointer right here for a 3% chance to gain a Kyurak mission on completion, simply because it will make me have to buy less maps because I can always fill up with Kyurak missions. So at this point we have established shaping the skies, shaping the mountains, shaping the seas and shaping the valleys. Uh, and we have an extra shrine. Next up, what we do is we actually go up and get some extra power through drawn to power and syncretism syncretism will make shrines even better and also the small notes right here give shrine buff effect chance to get an additional shrine so it's not just going to be one shrine usually shrines in your maps have a chance to be guarded by magic monsters that's more loot and more xp then the thing that a lot of you guys will absolutely hate but trust me on this uh you want to go trial of glory right here so once you get into yellow maps you now have the chance to actually spawn a trial of ascendancy and the thing about these is usually all they drop is a offering right something like this and that's going to be worth like three four maybe five k as a leak start and doing a trial is really annoying however should you get an upgraded trial right which you have a chance here four percent here two percent two percent two percent for a total of ten percent so every tenth trial you encounter will be an upgraded one give a chance to get a gift to the goddess and if you look at the prices right here you can see that very quickly they go from like 20 to 100 to 200 to 300 in the span of like two to three days. And that is because lab runners really want this one. So it goes even to 300, 400 KOs later. 
But basically, you have a 1 in 3 chance to get this, and uh, it is normally weighted 1 in 3 chance. The second thing you can drop is a dedication to the goddess, which is going to be around about 5-ish chaos at league start, and then you have this, which is also going to be around about 5 chaos. So basically, you have a 1 in 3 chance, and if you fail, you're going to get round about as much money as you would with a normal offering. And the good thing is you don't have to do all the trials to figure out what which is an upgraded one. It's going to be shiny, and it's going to say improved or upgraded something like that improved or upgraded on it um so you're gonna know exactly when to go in and the other trials you're just gonna skip if this didn't convince you respect it but i can just tell you it's really good tech for early after we take this we're actually going to start in our main money maker right about now we're gonna be in like late yellow maps which is gonna be expedition now i know i said i don't want to prolong my maps but there's one thing that is definitely worth it and that is i think expedition something like two gen gambling that is for sure worth it the first cluster we take is basically just all of this chance to encounter an expedition because we don't want to waste money i mean it's not wasting but we don't want to spend money on scarabs early we want to spend it to upgrade our character so we have eight percent base chance to get an expedition then we also get another four percent chance from stream of consciousness and then this uh total of 24 percent chance on top after we do that basically we're just going to fill out all the expedition notes so if you see here we just took ancient writings and then also distinguished demolitionist and after that we go up and we take very knowledge once that is done the only thing that's left to do is go up to this cluster which is very interesting basically there's four different vendors there's gwenon there is tujin danig and rog and we can decide basically which we want to encounter more often and we're going to take tujin and danig i want to say this though if you're good at rog don't let me stop you right he's incredible it's incredible money early if you know you're crafting if you're fine with standing in your hide on instead of, of killing monsters i personally would just rather gamble with tujin and get back into the next map so what we do is we go danik and then we go tujin so now we basically have all our expedition clusters taken we didn't take all the small nodes yet which you can definitely do in due time but there's one more thing because we're now going into round about the t14 territory that is uh take our influence and i personally at leak start prefer red influence right now which is very awkward because we're on the right side of the tree however there's these new gateways right the eldritch gateway so what you do is that you click on this you take it and then you can teleport over here which is what we're going to do the reason i like red influence a little bit more is simply because it has a lot more currency that's realistic to drop whereas blue influence is a lot more RNG. And I personally prefer consistent, at least at league start. Later, gambling is fun, but I want to get a good start into the league. So first up, we're going to go here and take Word of the Exarch, and then we're also going to take the small extra quantity for influence to get more influence mobs and more drops. And then we also go Light of Dawn. Now, if you feel really feisty, you can go Wrath of the Cosmos immediately. I usually like to wait at least a little bit. I'll also go Baptist by Fire a little bit later. The next thing that we're going to do is at this point... 14 plus expeditions are really valuable so what we want to do is block other content to get more expeditions so what do we not want to see now if you want to go rogue markers and you want to sell something like blueprints or contracts right go for it it's good currency right which doesn't take you any time you just click on the smugglers cash i personally do not want to engage on tft in the first few days i just want to play right i want to enjoy the new league so for me personally it's a block same with metamorph i don't care same with blight same with ritual as with all of these mechanics, they're usually balanced around you taking their points, right? You taking them in the Atlas passive tree. So if you just randomly encounter one without having that extra juice, it's just going to be mostly a waste of time. And obviously, the only thing you don't want to block is Expedition, right? So even Sacred Grove, even Legion encounters. Uh, the only exception to this is obviously Mirror of Delirium because it's just too good not to take. And after this, the only thing I still want to do is fill out these extra quantity of artifacts dropped by monsters, right? I'm going to fill out this here for some extra placement range, which makes it a lot more comfy. And also this one right here. I'm also going to consider Wrath of the Cosmos now, which I'm most likely by now. I'm going to have decent gear, so I'm going to take it. It's not going to be too much of a downside anymore. And I'm also going to take Baptist by Fire, because at this point I'm going to complete maps pretty fast. So progressing faster means you're going to get your invitations faster, which is good money. And yeah, that basically concludes the tree. At this point, you're at 112. Now you still have 20 points left. But at this point, you're well through, right? Um, you're just going to buy like the random maps that you didn't complete while going through the Atlas, right? At this point, you have this established. Now, what you want to do next is basically up to you. I'm probably at this point going to go for essences, but I'm not 100% sure. Also, we don't know how good these new breach nodes are. So I still want to see what's up. Want to watch the newest Grim video, right? Stuff like that. 
Um, so we're going to see about that. But up until here, this is what I'm going to do. But whatever you start with, I hope you have a great leak start experience. And I'll see you guys on the other side. And um, is there still another slogan? See you next time.